Hello Internets, this is Josh the Top Hat Gamer. 2014 is set to be a huge year in gaming, with the next gen consoles set to make their mark after their initial launch last year, as well as so many excellent games coming out across so many platforms. But, it pays to remember the achievements of yesterday, so here's my list of the top 10 games of 2013. Number 10. Alright, hear me out. I know this might be a shaky start to my best of list for many of you, but Dive Kick is honestly one of my favorite games of this year, unironically as well. As a fan of fighting games, I've never really been very good at them, competitively speaking, but I'm damn good at mind games, so when I get a fighting game that lets me play those mind games I love, while never having to remember a hundred fucking different moves, I love it. The entire game is controlled with two buttons. The fighting consists of jumping and kicking, but the secret to victory lies in timing and psyching your opponents out. Each character controls with their own little quirks and special moves for you to gain the upper hand, but at the end of the day, only one thing matters. DIVE KICK! Number 9 I gotta admit, I wasn't expecting to have more than one indie game on this list. But it's been a hell of a year for games and the indies are no exception. Rogue Legacy took up far too much of my time this year and I haven't even finished the bloody thing. The roguelike genre is all new to me, and I thought the idea of permanent death would put me off, but it's part of the game's charm. Playing as a member of a long line of adventurers, it's your job to venture through a mysterious castle, and with each death brings a new descendant to explore with. The variation between adventurers is one of Rogue Legacy's quirks, as they have not only different classes in magic, but different traits as well, such as irritable bowel syndrome and being colorblind. In a game that can feel quite grindy, Rogue Legacy benefits from having tight controls and instant gratification in the form of gold and recovery items. The payoff is getting a little further every time, and eventually an epic boss fight that'll make you feel like you earned your victory. The Castlevania-esque soundtrack and art style doesn't hurt either. Number 8 After about three Mario games of being pretty much the same, you might excuse me for being a little unenthusiastic when jumping into Super Mario 3D World. Its ridiculous name notwithstanding, Super Mario 3D World is easily the best Mario game since the groundbreaking Galaxy games. The inclusion of brand new power-ups like the Catsuit which enables easy climbing and running, and the berries that add an extra copy of your character to control is definitely appreciated. This is also the first multiplayer Mario game to bring back the four playable characters of Mario, Luigi, Toad, and Peach, calling back to Super Mario Bros. 2, one of my favorite classic Mario games. Best Mario game I've played in quite some time indeed. Number 7 When Raiden debuted back in 2001 as one of the heroes of the Metal Gear Solid franchise, most fans weren't pleased. Who would have thought that the less iconic of the Metal Gear leading characters would earn his own spin-off in the role of the Cyborg Ninja, and that it would be one of the best action games to grace a TV screen ever. And while that might sound like an overstatement, I'm 100% serious about my love for it. The speed of the combat and movement, and the fact that the game never stutters despite the amount of shit happening at any given time, and all the while there's a fast techno butt rock beat pulsing away in the background, oh my god it's so good! While not your standard Metal Gear game, it maintains elements central to the series, most importantly insane boss battles and likeable backup characters. Also it's awesome. Number 6 
I'm probably about as 90s kid as they come, so the inclusion of a Pokemon game on my list shouldn't surprise anyone. There's a few things that are particularly interesting about Pokemon X and Y and that help it earn its way onto this list. Its French-inspired setting is a change of pace from the better-known regions in previous games, and it's the first time many of us would have seen the Pokemon as we know and love in 3D since the days of Pokemon Stadium. While I do think some things are due for a change, like outdated Pokemon cries and the lack of follow Pokemon, like in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, I think the new visuals do a massive favour for some of the less well-designed Pokemon. The sense of nostalgia I get when I'm able to draw parallels between this and the earliest games in the series is why I've dubbed it the perfect entry-level Pokemon game. Number 5 The second platformer on this list may seem hard to believe, considering I've already got a Mario game here, but you know what? It deserves its place on this list. Rayman Legends is officially my favorite platforming game, hands down. It flows beautifully, and it genuinely looks like a painting in motion. The UbiArt engine is capable of amazing visuals, and it shows that maybe people focus on graphics too much rather than the game's art style. I think what makes this such an excellent platformer is a combination of a few things. Its sense of character, the flow of its levels, and the inclusion of special music levels. It seems like a small thing, but I'll let Rayman's recreation of Black Betty speak for itself. Number 4 If you had told me in late 2008 that Assassin's Creed would one day let me sail the high seas, I'd have spat my rum in your face and called you a damn liar. Now we have an Assassin's Creed game that puts you in the boots of a pirate who doesn't even identify as an assassin, and ironically, it's one of the best Assassin's Creed games to this day. The colorful cast of privateer comrades, the jaunty sea shanties, the excellent feeling of sailing the jackdaw, it all combines to make what can easily be called the greatest pirate game since Monkey Island. And the fact that I can swing from ship to ship clinches its position in the top half of this list. Number three. There are loved ones in the glory whose dear forms you often miss. What could top shooting superpower junkies and hulking monstrosities with an array of weapons and superpowers in a dystopic underwater city? How about shooting nationalists and biomechanical abominations in a city floating high above the world? I'd say if anything was going to top the original Bioshock, it was going to be Bioshock Infinite. While the gameplay can devolve into a hectic mess at times, the game never hiccups, and the environments and enemies really sell the setting, the city of Columbia, as its own character. Add to that a main cast of other interesting characters, a surprising soundtrack, and a story that deals with some heavy stuff, and you have a game that's certainly left its mark. Number two. Grand Theft Auto V is without a doubt the best sandbox game I've ever played. While some may argue that it doesn't have the degree of customization or craziness as other games in the genre, I think these lend to its excellence. Instead of a blank, customizable slate, you have three characters, each with different skills, personalities, and their own personal story arcs, and this fits with the overarching narrative perfectly. Switching between characters seamlessly mid-mission is an impressive feat and an interesting gameplay wrinkle, and the gameplay has been polished like crazy since Red Dead Redemption and GTA 4. To top it all off, the game looks amazing, and Rockstar's dedication to satire hits the sweet spot, the perfect open world crime game.
Thank you. Oh, my N-word, huh? <laughs> what What's up, up homie, huh? Oh. Number one. My favorite game of 2013 just had to be this. The somber, brutal magnum opus of a developer that I've been a fan of since I was a little kid. It had to be The Last of Us. Leaving the action movie vibe of Uncharted behind, Naughty Dog brought us a game with excellent characters who grow with the narrative, high tension situations, and solid stealth and cover based shooting gameplay. The apocalyptic setting was a surprisingly beautiful backdrop and accompanied by a soundtrack filled with lonely guitar twangs, The Last of Us makes for not only an excellent game to be played, but a great story to be experienced. But to clinch the number one spot, just listen to this performance. We're smarter than this. Really? Guess what? We're shitty people, Joel. It's been that way for a long time. No, we are survivors! This is our chance! It is over, Tess! So there you have it. My top 10 games of 2013. Of course, this is only my list, so feel free to leave your thoughts and even your own lists in the comments below. Here's to another excellent year in gaming. Game on.